Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's sports podcast. It's Friday, the 25th of February, um, 2022. And just before we start today, I don't do politics normally. I just want to say my thoughts and prayers of all the people of Ukraine. We're going through a horrible experience at the moment, so I'm sending my best wishes to you. Right, without further ado, uh, let's get on with the sport itself. We'll talk about the Premier League to start with. And um, Liverpool have closed the gap on Manchester City to the point now where they're three points behind. They've no games in hand, however, they play each other on the 10th of April. And that's, I think, at the Etihad, actually. Um, but it's in their own hands now, so they've got a chance that the title has really opened up after Manchester City slip up at home to Tottenham at the Etihad last Saturday, losing three goals to two in a really exciting game. Um, Liverpool had two victories this week. They won 3-1 last Saturday and not home to Norwich after being a goal down and fought back to win 3-1, but they also smashed Leeds 6-0 on Wednesday night. So they've put themselves in a really good position now. And um, I wish I'd got Salah in my fantasy league team. I've played triple caps and got 84 points some people this week, uh, unfortunately. But anyway, um, yeah, Liverpool are back in it now. Um, it's also getting exciting for the uh, third and fourth place because Chelsea are only on 50 points now. Manchester United and Arsenal are both catching. Uh, Manchester United are on 46. Um, they um, are doing well at the moment. They won at Leeds on Sunday um, by four goals to two and they end up after, again... A battle in the, a bit more like a splash pit really, they beat Leeds 4-2 in the rain, it was very heavy pitch, lots of water on the pitch, but Leeds fought from two down, that's two all, and then they threw it, threw it away basically, and let's, Manchester United played really well towards the end of the game, they won 4-2, um, so that puts them into fourth, but Arsenal won last night, a very late show, they were 1-0 down with about 5 or 10 minutes to go, and they ended up with a 95 minute winner. Uh, I think it was known goal by Jose Sarr, I haven't seen it, but uh, I believe he, he scored a known goal to make it 2-1 to Arsenal. So they're in fifth the one point behind Manchester United. It's closing up because behind them we've got West Ham and Tottenham and Wolves as well, all in the battle. But I think uh, maybe Wolves and Tottenham's race may be run for the fourth place. But like I say, Chelsea third, 50 points, Manchester United 46, Arsenal 45. Arsenal have played two games less than Manchester United. And if they win the game, one of the games in hand, they'll be two points behind Chelsea. So they could be a, they're having a bit of wobble at Chelsea at the moment, I think. So it'll um, be interesting to see what goes on next. But uh, yeah, so the battle there is tight. Also, the battle at the bottom is really tight. And after Burnley beat Tottenham, Tottenham go to Manchester City, win 3-2. Then on a wet, wet night on Wednesday in Burnley at Turf Moor, they get beat 1-0 and perform really badly. And they basically brought about a bit of a tantrum from... Antonio Conte as well, so we'll see what happens there. Tottenham are at Leeds tomorrow. That's a Saturday lunchtime game on BT Sport. Um, but down at the bottom, like I say, um, Watford are in a bit of trouble. Norwich have been trouble all the way through, but they've closed the gap a little bit. So Watford and Norwich at the bottom. Then you've got um, Burnley fighting with Newcastle, Everton and Leeds. And possibly even Brentford, who are falling down a little bit now. Brent Leeds have got a game in hand on Brentford, and they're a point behind. So they could get dragged into it. Everton have started to show signs of improvement under... Frank Lampard, uh, Newcastle are definitely showing signs of improvement with the new signings under Eddie Howe. So, and Burnley always fight, so they could easily get out again. So there's going to be a, it's going to be possibly a four or five way battle for that third relegation spot. I see probably Watford and Norwich going down, unfortunately for their fans. Um, there's a game tonight actually. This weekend's game start live to Sky game tonight. Southampton versus Norwich, 8 p.m. And if I've already mentioned the Leeds against Tottenham game tomorrow lunchtime. Um, then we've got um, Everton at home to Manchester City, 5.30pm on Sky, Saturday evening. And then the final league game on Sky this weekend, 2 o'clock, is West Ham versus Wolves. Another top four, top six, whatever you want to call it, battle for European places. Um, there's no league game at half four on Sunday because it's Carabao Cup final, which is also on Sky. And that's between um, Chelsea and Liverpool at Wembley. So they're out of league action this weekend. So if City can win at Everton, it'll sort of like restore a cushion a bit, but then Liverpool have the game in hand again. So um, it's uh, very exciting at the moment, I've got to say, at both ends of the table. Um, so moving on from uh, the Premier League, then we'll talk about the... Uh, we've already mentioned the Carabao Cup final. That's on Sunday, Chelsea-Liverpool. There are some doubts on both sides. Um, Chelsea picked up a couple of injuries in their Champions League game on Tuesday night, and we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, both Jota and Firmino are doubtful um, for Liverpool. Um, be interested to see if Chelsea actually pick Lukaku or not. His form's been very poor recently, so um, and he's obviously he feels unloved by Tuchel. So yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens there. But it should be a good match, exciting match. Both teams play good football. Um, Chelsea have already got the World Club Championship on the board. This will be Liverpool's chance to get their first piece of silverware on the board. So yeah, it's something to look forward to. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be enjoyable. Um, talking of Europe, 
and there were victories or successes this week for Chelsea to beat Lille 2-0 in their uh, first leg of the uh, play, uh, not playoff, it's first leg of this last 16 uh, in the Champions League. Uh, Manchester United battled to a one all draw um, away to Atletico Madrid. Um, they under the cost for a lot of the game, having, and um, Atletico hit the cost bar twice, but um, both sides only had one shot on target in, in the game, and they both scored. And Langer scored a great goal, finished off from an assist by uh, Bruno Fernandes. Um, so they battled hard, so they, they probably fancied chances at home, but you never know about Atletico. Um, sometimes they're better away than they are at home, so. And the form's been very patchy this season. The one thing United can play on is the fact that the defence, uh, Atletico defence has been very weak this year. So, but you probably need to exploit that if they're going to get through. Um, uh, in the Europa League, Rangers uh, got through 6-4 on average. They drew 2 all last night with um, Dortmund up at Ibrox. Um, so, having won 4-2 in the first leg, that's great. And they're through to the next round. I think it's a round of 16 in the Europa League. And probably the same for the conference because Leicester beat Randers on aggregate by I think it was seven goals to two or something like that. Let me have a look. I wrote it down. Yes, yeah, seven goals to two. They won three one last night in Denmark. They were three up and considered a late consolation goal. But unfortunately for Celtic, they have lost to the team that sound like they come from the Lord of the Rings. They were beaten two 0 by Bordeaux Glimp last night and lost five one on aggregate. Very poor, disappointing result. Maybe they'll say they're trying to concentrate on. Um, winning the title back in Scotland from Rangers, but I think I'd rather do better in the in the Europa and European competition than win the Scottish League because it doesn't really mean a lot to people outside Scotland. Sorry, Scottish friends, especially ones that support Rangers or Celtic. Okay, so I think um, now it's time to talk about the National League and FC Halifax Town. Uh, big game tomorrow at home to Dover. Um, last Saturday's game. Um, sorry, not home to Dover. Home to uh, Barnet. Last Saturday's game against Dover was actually called off. Um, due to a waterlogged pitch, which is not surprising with the storms we had last weekend, and we're going to be talking about those in a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, they've got Barnet tomorrow, they need to win that game to get back up the table. They're down to six, through no fault of their own. They had a really good result on Tuesday night away to Notts County at Meadow Lane. They drew one all. Um, they played most of the game, I think about an hour of the game with ten men after Jack Senior received a second yellow card. Um, so I'm sure he'll be disappointed with that, because I was. Um, having had taken the league as well early, early doors, um, town... Um, looked like they could possibly get all three but they ended up under the caution managed to battle on for a one-all draw but Wrexham and Solihull both had victories so they've passed Halifax now um, the game against Dover has been rearranged for Saturday the 12th of March when Halifax were due to play Solihull actually but they're in the FA Trophy the game against Solihull on that day has also now been rearranged that's on Tuesday the 5th of April um, so every game now I think has been rearranged so we know when they all are um, but Stockport appears to be getting away a little bit at the top of the table. They're six points clear now of Chesterfield. Chesterfield suffered a two home defeats in a row. Um, I've been being two up against um, Solihull. Been been beaten three two after sending off for Curtis West in the first red card of his career. And then on Tuesday night they were beaten at home by Wrexham two goals to nil. Um, I also believe after the injury to Shimanga, come on go Shimanga with his leg injury. They've also had a second one. It's Jack McCall. Who's also suffered a leg injury, so they've lost two players there for leg injuries. Um, but I believe my, my Chesterfield correspondent tells me that Jeff King's now back after suspension. So uh, until he gets suspended again, possibly we'll be never sending off. But you know, we know what it's like here at town. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what goes on with Chesterfield for the rest of the season. Now they've got Cook as manager. Um, you can, if you do follow Chesterfield, by the way, you can fault their game against Ch Leoville. Is uh, they're at home to Yeovil tomorrow on 20 past 5 on BT Sport if you want to watch that. Like I say, Town have got an important game against uh, Barnet tomorrow. We need to get back to winning ways and keep play up push, uh, playoff push going because um, we're doing really well at the moment. We've had a good season so far. We don't want it to like, fall away now, do we? After such hard work, but it's so tight. Um, there's very few points between like between second and ninth and tenth, and you know. So let's see how it goes this week anyway. OK, moving away from football now, we'll talk about Rugby Union. The Six Nations uh, competition uh, resumes this weekend. We've got three matches, as usual. Um, the first game's on BBC, quarter past two kick-off, and that is Scotland against France. Then the big game of the weekend, England versus Wales at Twickenham. That's 4.45, and that's on ITV. And then Sunday afternoon, and also on ITV, three o'clock kick-off, we've got Ireland against Italy. France, the only unbeaten team so far, looking to keep up against Scotland. That'll be a tough match for them. Scotland started pretty well. Uh, England and Wales have both started fairly well, and Ireland have started okay. All of the lost to France, they didn't get disgraced at all. They are a good team, so should be some good action this weekend. Um, we've switched codes now. Talk about rugby league, and we'll start by 
talking about the sad passing of Aiga Twigamala, um, the former Wigan um, Rugby League and also Newcastle Rugby Union player, New Zealand All Black. Um, I remember going to see him play, specifically I went to a game at Oddsall to watch him play for Wigan against Bradford Northern, as I think they were, and it was just before the Super League era, probably 93 or 94, I'd say, and uh, I went specifically to watch him, and um, he also was a great rugby, uni rugby player, rugby union and rugby league player, uh, sadly passed away a couple of days ago at the age of just 52, a year younger than myself, so it makes you realise what a sad loss that is, um, but yeah, um, condolences to all his friends and family there, um, talking about what's going on, Super League, um, last night we saw a victory for Catalans, they won 10-4 at Headingley, uh, and also we had w uh, Wigan beating Huddersfield by 22 points to 12, um, Casford fans like Dean, your team's on tonight, they're playing a little KR away, um, so that'll be one for you to watch if you feel like it, and they might get another defeat, hopefully not, but you never know. Um, elsewhere this weekend is the fourth round of the Challenge Cup, and Halifax Panthers um, are taking on Featherstone Rovers at the Shea, Sunday, 3pm kickoff. A uh, big battle between two teams that I know each other very well. Um, it's always a big rivalry between the two clubs. Um, some of it not pleasant, I've got to say. Um, but one of the big three big games of this fourth round, the other big games being Lee against Widnes, which is on Premier Sports. I think it's quarter to eight kickoff Monday evening. And the other big game is London against Bradford, and that's on Sunday. I think probably, I haven't checked the kickoff, but it's probably three o'clock. If you're interested, you can always look it up anyway. Um, so there are three big battles this weekend um, in the Challenge Cup. Halifax's game at Workington was called off, I won't say controversially, but it's inconvenient more than anything else. After the pitch was past fit, 8am 8 8 by the Rugby League official up at uh, Derwent Park, the game was then called off because of the fact that the conditions weren't fit to play. Lots of Halifax fans had already t sat off by that point and they weren't happy about it. Um, some even got there, um, but... Personally, I wouldn't have set off, but if you're a big rugby league fan, you don't want to miss your days, away days, I suppose. So, uh, But yeah, disappointing that for them. Um, moving on now to the local league cricket, because the cricket season um, is not that far away, I suppose. It starts on the 16th of April. The fixes have been released by the Halifax Cricket League for this forthcoming season. And um, the first day of the season is Easter Saturday. And on Easter Saturday... Um, we see uh, opening matches for um, Bradshaw away to Triangle and we also see Sorby Bridge at home to Illingworth St Mary's. The other games on the opening day of the season are Copley against Booth, Great Horton Park Chapel against Worley, London Foot against um, Sorby Bridge Church Institute, we've got Thornton against Mike and Roy as the other game, so they're the six games and obviously Mike and Roy are looking to get their uh, championship defence off to a good start there, so good luck to them as well. Um, one of the high, early season highlights from a personal point of view comes on the 30th, two weeks later, when we've got Sorby Bridge at home to Bradshaw. Um, that's the, I think it's the third match of the season, so something to look forward to there for the two teams that I'm most interested in. Um, I think it's going to be a good season, hopefully. The season it will end on the 17th of September, where that's the last day of the season, so... Um, plenty to look forward to there and hopefully we'll get some more team news through if you want to keep up with what's going on in the world of Halifax Cricket uh, you can follow Halifax Cricket League at Halifax at HCL I think it is on Twitter if you want to follow thing, and me on Twitter by the way it's at Gbobuk that's G-E-B-O-B-U-K um, I often share certain things with regards to sports on there so if you want to have a look at those it might find some of interest um, I think that's just about it for this week um, Obviously, I've mentioned the sad news about Twigamala passing away there earlier. Uh, and the other one I wanted to mention was, we've already mentioned Des Drummer, but it's just football related, I didn't realise. But former lower league footballer Joey Beecham passed away a few weeks ago as well. Um, I think he was only 50 years old. He'll, people will probably remember him playing for teams like Oxford. Um, I think he may have had a beast spell at West Ham as well if he had played for the first team, but he was at Oxford. Maybe, I think Swindon as well. So, he's well known about the lower league. So, RIP to Joey and... You know, again, condolences to all his friends and family. Um, one other thing, there was no darts last night, Premier League darts. There was no round. It was supposed to be in Berlin, but it was cancelled because of the, the uh, COVID situation. That's being rearranged for the 13th of June, Thursday the 13th of June. And the next round is next Thursday at the West Point Arena in Exeter. So the people who love darts, that's your next round to watch. Okay, so that's, I think, about all I want to cover this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching as always. 
Um, any comments, please put them down below. Um, anything you want to see added, please message me privately if you wish to do so. Other than that, until next week, it's bye from me. Bye.